Hello, welcome to our semiconductor education program. This is Vincent Chan. Today, I'm going to continue our lesson on the Vinbridge sinusoidal oscillator and present a spice simulation example. Spice simulation example for the Vinbridge oscillator. Spice simulation of Vinbridge oscillator. Vim bridge oscillator. So on the left hand side of the slide, you see a Vim bridge oscillator with so called nonlinear amplitude control. So the main, the core of the Vim bridge, the core of the oscillator is composed of a basic amplifier and a frequency selective network. And the mu A741, along with the two resistors, serve as an amplifier, the basic amplifier. And the two RC network serve as a frequency selective network. A nonlinear amplitude, amplitude control is composed of the four resistors, R3, 4, 5, 6, and the two semiconductor dial. And also, the four registers are connected to the positive and negative supply, respectively. So now, here's the SPICE simulation outcome, the SPICE simulation result. So the purpose, the learning objective of this lecture has two folds. So number one, so I want you to I want to emphasize, strengthen your concept on the effect of loop gain. So with a different loop gain, you're gonna see the different result. So number two, I'm, I want I want to do a sort of a hand analysis and the spice results reconciliation. Now I want to focus on the reconciliation for the output amplitude between the spy simulation and the hand analysis. So let me just speak, uh, talk to you for a moment. So I just remember the reason why I designed this lecture uh, was when I think about, when I think about the lesson I learned when I was a college student, and then I, I can solve a sinusoid oscillator, but I just I just couldn't make the connection between the formulation, the solving, the loop gain with, because it's a sinusoidal, right? So supposed to, because think about this, we solve the Bachhausen criterion, loop gain and Bachhausen criterion for magnitude for phase is in the frequency domain. But sinusoidal oscillator, sinusoidal is, is the waveform in terms of what? The time. It's in the time domain, it has a sort of uh, miss a connection between the circuit and uh, the upper waveform. And I want to close the gap. I cannot bring you to a lab to connect a real oscillator circuit with a oscilloscope. But at least we can do some sort of simulation to close the gap. So I think that's also another perspective, another reason why I design. I want to teach you this lecture, all right? So, because in the spice simulation, so you, can, you can easily adjust the value of R2. So when you adjust the value of R2, then you adjust what? The magnitude of the complex loop game, all right? So here's the first one. Assuming the magnitude of, of the R2, the, the R2's value and the magnitude of the loop game is 0.9. If the 0 0.9 loop gain is assigned, then here's the outcome. So you see what? A damped oscillation. So with over 0 0.5 millisecond, once you turn on the supply, within 0 0.5 millisecond, the oscillation is over. Vanish, it's gone, right? It's gone, well, there's no oscillation. If loop gain is 1.1, that's what you see. 
So after 0 0.5 milliseconds, the, uh, the amplitude will start growing. The amplitude will start growing. So if the 1.4, then the time to grow the amplitude, to initiate the amplitude growing, and starts what? Sooner, earlier. So around 0 0.5, 0 0.1 milliseconds start growing. Okay, so you see the different log gain have the different outcome. So now, so here's the first part, okay? The effect of log gain on the sinusoid waveform. This is number one. Number two, spy simulation versus hand analysis. I want to focus on uh, what you learned from the previous lecture. If log gain is 1.05, remember what I told you in the previous two lectures, I said, to initiate in the real practical implementation of the sinusoid oscillator. So the loop game so the loop game has to be greater than one, but very close to one, right? So just a little bit, slightly greater than one. So 1.1 probably is too big. So maybe 1.05, 1.03, either even 1.01 is good. So let's say if the 1.05, 1. Point, and also you see from this, okay? So if 1.4, the sinusoid waveform also suffer what? Harmonic distortion, harmonic. This is also one of the reason the loop gain can be too big. Anyway, 1.05, and then here's the outcome. Let me show you the outcome. So here's the waveform. So waveform is pretty, you know, it's, if you turn the 90 degrees, looks like what? The envelope that looks like a wine glass, right? It looks like a, a, a wine glass. It's, it's kind of it's smooth and beautiful. So now, let's focus on, you know, why when the set amplitude is got saturated, what happened? Because it's the nonlinear, this is what you learned from the previous lecture, right? So the lower dial, the D2, because it's anode, is connected to the output. So, so when the output is too high, it's going positive to the upper ceiling, and then the D2 will be turned on. So when the D2 is turned on, then the ceiling will cut off, will saturate, will force the output level at its maximum, at its maximum level. In other words, the maximum ceiling is limited by the lower dial, the D2. Also, on the other side, the upper dial, the D1, will limit the most negative voltage, the value, okay? So the mountain is decided by the D2, and the valley is decided by the D1, okay? This is the typo, all right? So the D1 has to be to what? This is a typo. So the pink one, pink highlight should be turned on. When the D1 is turned on, when the D1 is turned on, then, the negative, the most negative voltage will be limited, will be limited, right? This is the typo. So now, let's focus on the reconciliation, try to see if they can, re if we can reconcile the hand analysis with the simulation. So now, you see the, what? I said the most uh, positive voltage, the positive Amplitude, the maximum output signal amplitude is limited by the pink highlight, right? R5, 6, and D2. Also, the negative 15 volt. This is what you learned from previous lecture. So let's plug in this. So what's the orange? No, the voltage. So the, you're supposed to be familiar with this. So the orange volt, note, the orange node voltage is the contribution from, part of the contribution from VO, right? 5 plus 6, 
and also times what? Six, right? And also part of another contribution from the negative power supply. So it's five, six, six, five, and then what? And then five, right? So sub principle of superposition. And then what? Once you get the orange node, then you deduct the constant voltage drop, deduct VD. And this is supposed to be equal to what? This is the VD. Right, let me see if I can. No, no good. If I can. Mm. But anyway, this equation is the, I just want to get off my, hmm, this? Yes, good, okay. So minus Vd, and then what? Then equal to, equal to what? Equal to the left-hand side voltage, the green node. So what's the value of the green node? Vo times, Vo divided by R2 plus R1 times R1. My, you get it? So if you solve this, solve what? Solve VO. Then you can get the hand analysis result for the maximum output voltage, right? So solve VO, you can get the maximum output voltage. Get it? All right, so here's the takeaway. The first learning objective, I want, you, I want to use this lecture to strengthen your learning, your concept on the effect of loop gain on the sinusoid waveform. So again, less than one, the above is 0 0.9 damped oscillation. And then 1.1, 1 1.4 1 is greater than one, then growing oscillation. But the higher loop gain will cause the sinusoid waveform suffer from what? Nonlinear distortion. Less than number two, the heat. Excuse me. The takeaway, the second takeaway is the loop simulation versus hand analysis. And this is what you learn from the previous one. And we use this equation, this equation to solve this, right? The upper limit is, is decided by the pink highlight. And uh, you solve this equation, this equation, right? And you solve the VO. The corresponding VO is supposed to be Corresponding VO is supposed to be, be what? Be around eight volt, maybe more a little bit. So you can solve this by yourself, right? But let me remind you, the result might be a little bit, there might be a little bit difference between the hand analysis and the simulation. Why? Because this is not the ideal R pen. So during the hand analysis, this is not the ideal R pen. So this is the, the, the bipolar 741, we use the bipolar 741 to model this, okay? So also, if you are going to do the smile simulation by yourself, they, let me encourage you, uh, you can try two models. So one is the 741 model, the bipolar transist, bipolar operational amplifier 741, or you can also try the ideal model, right? So. We have come to the end of this lecture. I hope you can understand the, these two learning objectives. So see you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.